Hi guys, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hi everyone, we are live, we are back. We are live again, I'm well now. The flu is a bit gone, we thank God. How is everyone? I'm having a cup of lemon here, it's Christmas. It's Christmas in Canada, guys. <sighs> nice to see all of you. We are live. Call your friends, call your relatives, tell them Joyce is live. <laughs> tell everyone that we are live. Hi, Sarah Mbogwa. You're the first one. Hugs. <laughs> Hugs to you, Sarah, for being the first one to come on my live. Lemon. Welcome for a cup of lemon. I've been fighting flu here. Big change of weather. It's now snowing. So you understand. If you find that my voice is not very clear. But I'm good. We thank God. How is it? <laughs> How many are we? Can we start? Let me see who is here. Hi, Sarah. Hi, she's Joki. Yeah? Joki Waweru. How are you, Joki? Hi, Kevin. Keep course gay. Hi, Sarah Mbugwa. Hey, you're moving too fast. Paris Nyambura, Neema Williams, Arthur Ashaba, Stephen Mokunya, Siambua, Laira, yeah? Laila, George Njenga, Veronica Wanziku, Kiragu, Khalid, Wycliffe, Tea. How are you guys doing? <laughs> How are you doing? We are back. And did you see the talk for today? We are going to discuss what you should not do at the airport. What to do and what not to do. We'll be answering those questions. So if you have a question around what you need to do at the airport, please drop it here. We are going to answer you. Any information shared here is not legal advice. It's just my opinion. A long time, Felix. How are you? Have you missed me? Dennis Kirui, how are you? David Kanyanya, Teresa Kongo, Sunji, Nyangiri, wow. Kriti, Afolabi, Romana, Wanjiko, Lucy Mwangi, Wycliffe, Tea. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> mm -hmm. Watching from Africa, Kenya, Machakos, always great advice listening. Thank you. Hi, Joyce. How long should visit visa take after biometrics? Which country are you? You should be able to check your country online because all countries are different. By the way, I don't think it's about country. Let me correct myself. I've seen people get visa in two days. Guys, can you believe that? There's a guy I saw, somebody I know. Somebody I know. Actually, a relative of mine. <laughs> the video, he went for biometrics on a Friday. The following week on a Tuesday, he received an email to take his passport. It's a relative of mine. Guys, can you imagine? And I know someone who applied their visa December last year and they have not received their visa. Huh? I don't know anybody in the embassy. Maybe God just favored him because he's my relative. And because I'm doing a good job to answer your questions and you don't even pay me, guys. Can you start sending money here? Right here. <laughs> Khalid from Kenya. Yeah, he's from Kenya. Even that guy I'm talking about is from Kenya. So sometimes you can't even tell. Sometimes you can't even tell. Huh? Okay, today I want to share a story. You know, I like stories. <laughs> I want to share a story of somebody who, who, who came through Pearson Airport and what he encountered. And maybe you can learn something from him. <laughs> stories are good eh? stories help us to learn 
Romana Wanjiko, I need an agent. Seriously, Shiko? The way I have campaigned for that agent, he should actually pay me for that. Hmm? Ah, yeah, yeah. Check, check my video for Joyce Kainas Canada agent. If you type that, it's going to appear in my videos for on my other channel. And then you follow the instructions. You just send me an email on joycecanada3 at gmail.com. joycecanada3 at gmail.com. I have put my emails auto reply. So if you send me some of that, I may not be able to see it unless you are a nurse. If you are a nurse, there's a link for you to join the Telegram group. It's just because an immigration consultant. So I'm not allowed to, to have an interaction on immigration. It's not under my jurisprudence. So uh, how was my day? My day was, has been good. It's still, uh, my day is still very young. It's 2.40 PM, 20 minutes to three. And my kids come from school at three. So I need to finish this live and then I leave. But I've already, we already have dinner. Guess what you're eating for dinner tonight? Pumpkins. <laughs> Imagine that's what I cooked. I don't know whether they are going to eat. I just made pumpkins, some meat and rice and some cabbage. That's it. <laughs> I don't know whether they are going to eat. They'll say, hey, what is this? Hmm? So, guys, this is what happened to this guy who was coming uh, from Africa. Video clarity, Ikonashida. Guys, it has a me. Oh, okay. I have increased the volume. I hope now you're going to be okay. You are happy to have made the live. Yeah, we are live. So, this guy got a Visit visa, uh huh. Of course, when you get your visit visa, what next is to book your ticket. <laughs> so he booked his ticket and and he he came to Canada. Of course, you have to have a reason why you want to come to Canada. So when he came to the airport, one of the airports, one of the main airports, it's actually Toronto, not any other airport. It's Pearson. So he found the visa officers there and he told them that uh, he want to file for asylum. Oh, I want to file for asylum because, uh, because my country, my life is in danger in my country. And so, of course, if you say that, they have to ask you, uh, they have to ask you the reason for filing asylum. Somebody is asking me for a WhatsApp number. Seriously, you must be new. I don't have a WhatsApp number, but I have an email. Yeah, so they, he said that he wants to file for asylum at the airport. <laughs> so the guy, he found the immigration, not immigration, so these are border officers. He was so harsh to him. That's the story he was sharing. And he was like, uh, because the guy said that he's uh, part of the LGBT group and he wants to file for asylum because in his country, this thing is not acceptable, it's not legal. So he harassed him. He was asking him, uh, he was telling him, you're lying, you're not even part of this group. You people are coming to take advantage of opportunities here in Canada. These services are support the people that are, you know, that are legally for under that group, but you people are coming here and lying. He made a lot of noise. He made a lot of noise at him. And then he said, I want you to change. This is where the, my point is. My point is not the story, the story of how he filed his thing. Eh? My story is now uh, at this point. So this guy told him that um, I want you to, he gave him a paper and his, a, a piece of paper and he said that I want you to change. I want you to change your your idea, your your reason, and give a, a different reason because what you, whatever you are saying is not true. Because this guy has a wife and children at home, he has a wife and I think three kids at home. <laughs> so this officer was asking him, why couldn't you? Uh, because now you have come and you want to bring your family, your wife, and your children. Why can't you bring your your boyfriend? Because he's a man. 
and of course he has said he's LGBT. So the officer is asking him, why can't you say, why can't you write here that you're married to a man in your country? You are, you are writing here that you're married to a woman and three children. It means you want to bring your family here and, and you're lying the reason for filing for asylum. So he was told that, oh, um, uh, I want you to change. So he was given a piece of paper. So this guy went and, and wrote. He wrote and, and wrote there that uh, me, I'm LGBT, and that's why I want to file asylum. He insisted on the same. He was given the paper like five times. The second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. And this officer was very angry because he was like, ah, why can't you change that reason? Because you're lying. You're lying. You're not part of that group. You're lying. And it's, it's, it's outside there where people are queuing, where everybody is waiting to, you know, to be cleared. Anyway, finally he was told, okay, you can go, but just know that it won't go anywhere. <laughs> That's what he told him. Let's go, but you guys just know that it won't go anywhere. All of you are coming and lying. Uh, two people are that group in that group and you're lying and just want to bring your family. You're taking advantage of Canada's, um, you know, uh, services that are there for those people. The story ends there. I know you guys want to hear more <laughs> because you guys love stories. Munapenda udaku sana. <laughs> so anyway, the guy now was released and he was around it. So what are we learning from this? These people can harass you at the airport. They can push you. They, they can tell you, change the reason. Tell, tell us something else. Do not tell us that you're filing asylum for this reason. Give another reason. And if they see that you're not confident with whatever you had said initially, they will push you to write something else. And if you dare write something different, then that is the end of you. That would be the end of you because then it shows that you you persistent. Exactly, Edith. It means that you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so, and some people can panic because Canada for you is life and death. Like if you don't, if they don't allow you to enter Canada, you will die. Another woman at the airport just removed her clothes, all her clothes, like pop. <laughs> because she was told you have to go back to your country. So she decided, ah, me, I can't go back. This thing, I've really worked hard for it. And now you're telling me to go back. They pulled her inside, you know, you know, when you undress, people don't even know where to hold because <laughs> your skin is slippery. So they just pulled her inside a certain room there and they went to interrogate her. I don't know whether they told her to dress up and enter Canada, <laughs> but most of the time they'll say, ah, welcome to Canada, but as no, it won't go anywhere. Anyway, I don't know whether... Whether they write this anywhere, I don't know whether they put a red flag somewhere and say, maybe during your hearing, this thing will reappear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's good to know that some of uh, some of the officers can actually harass you at the airport. And <laughs> there's a lot of stories, guys, at the airport. A lot of stories. You know, when you come to Canada and you want to file for asylum, you can decide to do it at the airport, at the port of entry, and you can decide to wait. Me, sometimes I think it's good to wait. <laughs> because at the airport, you can find yourself, you can just find yourself, you say you can find that you're saying things that are not relevant because you have panicked you. You, are, you don't know whether you're excited. You don't know. <laughs> me, according to me, I would just tell you, come, enter. Come inside, meet the lawyers, discuss with them. Because whatever you write at the airport, you cannot change after that. It is that way. That's what you're going to remain saying until the last day of hearing. And then when you go for hearing, they are going to decide whether they want to give you or to deny you. If they deny you, they, they tell you, go back home. But now for Canada, it's very interesting because it's not like the U.S. You know, for U.S., if they tell you they are deporting you, like if they decide they are deporting you, they, they don't even allow you to go back home. Wherever they find you, if it's in the bus, if it's in the train, they just take you, pull you, pay your ticket back home. 
But for Canada, if they tell you they are deporting, humanitarian, Canada, Canada is just love. Love is a country full of love. So Canada, when they want to deport you, they write a letter to your mailbox, not even to your email, to your mailbox. So you, you receive the letter because you, you have already given, given them the address where you are living. They have even allowed you to stay maybe for a whole year. They have even given you a home. Guys, you remember the story I gave you last time, last year, of a woman whom I know. They had even given her a, a home because in Canada, if you're fighting for asylum, they'll even give you a home to stay for free. So they had even given her a home. And she had four, four children. <laughs> she had left her, her husband. I think she was from Nigeria. <laughs> four children. So the when they told her that they uh, on on this date like they give you like like three weeks in three weeks time on this date at this time we will come to deport you can you imagine they're preparing you ah that woman was like hey me and my four children you come and deport me <laughs> they came and knocked you know when they're coming to your home they they normally come the police took us from the police the ambulance and the fire, the fire truck, all of them. So she's some. she lives somewhere near where I used to live that time. <laughs> so when the people, when the police came, they knocked her home. <laughs> Guess what the woman did? And she's big. She's big like this. You see me, I'm here. Her, she's up to here. 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 See there. She's up to there. So they knocked her door and she opened. Guess what? She was naked and her four kids were all naked. It's a true story. <laughs> and she opened the door. <laughs> and the police were all like, and then she had cut herself with the, with the I think, a razor. She was bleeding. So they didn't see anywhere where to, to touch her. I'm like, gosh, we are coming to take her to the airport because they normally come for you. They carry your luggage, escort you to the airport. They give you the ticket and bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so when when they when they came to her she she was like and all her children were undressed also everybody was like that <laughs> so they called the ambulance this is a case that needs to be attended urgently we can't even handle this the woman was taken to the nearest hospital for mental checkup and that's it. I don't know what happened, but I normally see her around. So she didn't go anywhere. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just, you know, today is today is story day. Today is story day. Uh, hi, show us, show us around your house. Harrison Munga, why would you want to see my house? And I don't do vlogs for lifestyle. Seriously. I do immigration content, so why would you want to see my house? And I don't do vlogs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you one of these days. <sighs> so guys, you are, I'm waiting for you to ask questions. That's why I'm narrating stories. Call your friends so that they can hear these stories. Tell them to come. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Some of you have not even subscribed. Canada is a very good country, guys, because of human rights. You know, Canada is very well known for human rights. It's very rare to find somebody has gone through the whole process, has gone for hearing, and they have deported her. Not Canada. I've heard that in Germany. Germany, they are... Which country are they? Is it Germany or UK? They are taking people to Rwanda. Asylum seeker, <laughs> I think it's UK. If you go to file asylum in the UK, they, they take you to Rwanda. Seriously? Rwanda. <laughs> so you are running away from Africa to go to to go seek asylum eh, abroad. Then they return you to another country in Africa. Like, seriously? I Me, mean, I wouldn't go. It's UK. Somebody has heard that story. UK. They return you to Rwanda. Huh? Me, if they return me to Rwanda, I'll just take a bus to Kenya. I'll not even stay in Rwanda. Why would I stay in Rwanda? 
I'll just take my bus, the next bus, the following morning, <laughs> back to Kenya. And I forget the story of <laughs> The government stopped taking people to Rwanda there. It's too much expensive. They have realized it's expensive. But you know, even even um, even Germany, Germany, they they have, they have said they don't want people to file asylum in their country. So we are only left with Canada. You people, Canada, clap for Canada. <laughs> in the U.S., if you dare file asylum in the U.S., eh, give yourself at least not less than twenty years before they they hear your case. Twenty years. Canada nowadays, it has to be within one year. They have had your case. The decision is made. They either give you or not give you. One year. And now because of backlog, because there's a lot of people filing for asylum, they are going to make it even faster. Here you cannot, we here we do not have undocumented people. We don't have people hiding. I don't know like the way I hear stories in the US. Canada is straightforward. Is either yes or no. Hmm? Okay, somebody got a visa. Let's clap for him. Uh, I saw somebody who got a visa. <laughs> what kind of evidence is needed for LGBT? Guys, can we answer her? Is it a her or a he? Can we answer? <laughs> you need to prove. It's not a joke. You need to prove. <laughs> Somebody was saying that you need to show pictures that you actually. That one. That's a... Come and say hi to my people. <laughs> say hi. And tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. You are so tall. <laughs> Why is your channel down? You used to have a channel. <sighs> Eh? I don't know. What happened? And you know, some people had subscribed to your channel, so they should go and sub and subscribe. No. But you don't give them content. Huh? How was cool? school? It was good. Say hi to them. Hello. Tell them subscribe to Mom's channel. Subscribe to Mom's channel. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's my son. Wow. <laughs> so guys, you hear somebody is saying that in Rwanda, they are in Germany, they are deporting people. Yeah, it's true. Germany, they are actually de deporting. Germany, they are deporting. <laughs> Canada. Canada is the only savior we have. So this is the season. This is the season for Canada. If you don't come now, in the next 10 years, we'll be saying, there used to be, we'll be giving stories. There used to be Canada. <laughs> Maybe they will also introduce something. So you better come now. Hmm? I have a big son. He's 15. It's just the body. You know, our body's here because of, hmm? because of the food. People grow very fast. He's only 15. <laughs> uh... Somebody is saying what? Today we are talking about Asalam. Ask questions about Asalam. Somebody was asking for proof. Answer her. Tell her how you can prove that you are actually part of that group. You need to prove. You need to prove. You know here they allow those weddings. Huh? So it's legal. You can actually wed. <laughs> And to mother, son, mother tongue to my son. He knows. You think I speak to, to them in English? Me? Me speak English to my kids? You are joking. You don't know me. Me, I don't speak English to them. They refuse to talk, but I speak. I make sure I speak and they hear. So they hear and then they, they talk to me in English. But me, I speak in my mother tongue to them and Kiswahili. But I make sure they hear, but they don't talk. They refuse to talk. <laughs> What is minimum wage in Canada? Fifteen dollars per hour. Fifteen dollars per hour. 
15 dollars per hour is the average each province is different some provinces like yukon is 12 dollars you know yukon <laughs> who wants to go to yukon you can go hmm. waiting for my visa patiently a little worried though don't get worried the best you can do is to pray Worlds apart consult huh you should not get worried if you worry you don't help so the best thing to do now as you wait is to pray me i believe god gives these visas eh? because sometimes you see people getting visas you're like wow how did this one get like another one who got and he came last week i was like wow if this one got then everybody should get you know yeah, so people should try. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Hi, Joyce. Been your follower for two years. Your content has been of great help to me. I have managed to secure my study visa for January intake. What are the possible questions of POE? Wow. Congratulations, Robert Mutai. Wow. I'm happy for you. I have a story. Ah, this one I have to. I I hope he's here. With his permission, I'll share the story. There's another guy who called me last last week. Is it last week or this week? When is today? Today is Wednesday. He called me on Monday this week. <laughs> he's a nurse. He's on my Telegram group. So he got a school in the in the city where I live. Huh? Got a call before he was in a school in a different location, and then he transferred. Initially, he had come to Canada with a business uh, visa, not business visa, to study business administration diploma in a college, I think, in Manitoba. Then he was like, normally, the way I tell you, after the first semester, you can transfer. So he was able to transfer. After the first semester, he came to a college near where I live, and um, he came to study PSW, personal support worker. So he was admitted, and now he's he's finishing this December because it's one year course. He's a nurse. He's, he's, he's now a nurse, aide, not a nurse. He's an, he came to my group because he's a nurse. <laughs> so he's graduating in December. Now, the challenge is, you understand that all the international students who are in Canada at the moment, they're allowed to work 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week, which is very good be because before they used to work 20 hours. But guess what, guys? He's not been able to get a job, even with that. He's not been able to get a job. For the last six months, he has not gotten any job to work as a nurse aide. It's very serious. So you can imagine if she hasn't gotten a job in the last six months, it means she, he's not even able to pay his school fees. So me, what I borrowed from him it's very important where you go to study. Because I think he's not able to get a job because of location. Where I live, I normally tell you I live in the village. <laughs> I live in the village, one of the villages in Canada. So he came to study in the village. Here, there's, here we don't have a lot of immigrants. There's a lot of white people, you know? So... And the job opportunities are not as many compared to Toronto. If he had gone to a school in Toronto, there is no way he cannot find a job in Toronto. It's not possible. You understand? Because Toronto is surrounded by a lot of cities, Mississauga, there's Brampton, there's Scarborough, there's uh, uh, Windsor is a bit far. But I mean, there's uh, a lot of towns surrounding Toronto. So it's not possible for him not to find a job. So when you're looking for a school, when you're looking for somewhere to start your life as a visitor, don't start in the small cities. I know people say that there are opportunities, but that guy told me, mm -mm. tell people not to come to the rural communities in the big, unless you're coming with a PR. If you're coming with a PR, it's okay. But if you're coming as a visitor, if you're coming as a student, opportunities are less. Okay. So that's what I borrowed from him. Um, my friend got a visa through the agent you gave me. Thanks and be blessed. Wow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
congratulations to your friend. Tell him to come and buy me a cup of coffee when he come to Canada. But they don't even remember me when they come. Ah, you think they remember Joyce? Ah, they don't even watch my videos. When they come to Canada, from East Land, I will change my content and I'll start doing vlogs so that they can watch and show my house, <laughs> like somebody suggested. Anyway, I'm so happy. If you want the agent number, my phone number, not my... <laughs> My email number is joycecanada3 at gmail.com. joycecanada3 at gmail.com. Okay. Um, greetings, Joyce. I'm writing you from Bahrain. I am on the process for visit visa to come to Canada for asylum. I am Cameroon. You know the English-speaking Cameroonians and the French has crisis. Oh, hey, why are they fighting? Cameroon, eh? Our Africa. Why, why do people fight? Why do we have to hate each other? Hmm? Yeah, tell her to make sure she buy me coffee when she come. To come. Not, I don't take coffee. Coffee is too bad. It's too strong. I take French vanilla. <laughs> tell him to come and buy me French vanilla. I love sweet, sweet things. Um, greetings, watching from South Africa. How about New Brunswick province in terms of studying? Is it, any province is good. What we are saying is that make sure you go to the big, big cities. Eh? Don't start your life in the small cities. Like me, when I came to Canada, I didn't start where I am. I started in Brampton because it's is near Toronto. It's actually a 20 minutes drive to Toronto. So start in the around the cities. And then now when you get your citizenship or your whatever you settle, you can move to the ruler. Hi Joyce, I have an opportunity of coming for a six-month laboratory research work, but I learned I will be giving. I'll be given six months visa. I want to ask, is it possible to change the visa to work permit? Where? You can't do that. The research thing, you can't. You can't. You have to go back home. Can't do that. Research, you can't. Research is like, research is like a scholarship. Scholarship, you have to go back home. You can't do anything with it. So just come, finish the six months, go back home. Getting another visa to come will be very easy. will be very easy if you show that royalty. Don't spoil that relationship. Let me give you another story. How many minutes? I had promised somebody I would only be here for 30 minutes. Then I go. I was going somewhere. Uh, another story of somebody in the U.S. Guys, somebody in the U.S. Who was uh, Waterloo? How is Waterloo? Waterloo is good, very good. Waterloo is, is a big city. There is a big university. I think one of the largest university in, in Ontario is in Waterloo. Waterloo University is a good place. Uh, so there's a guy in the U.S. Huh? who went to the U.S. He went through uh, cruise ship. You know these jobs that people go and work in the cruise. So he went to the U.S. <laughs> and then he decided he wanted to ponyoka in in French. In English, it means he, he wants to run away and come to Canada. Get this. He's in the US. He's trying to come to Canada. That was sometime before they closed the border. Because right now they have closed the border for Canada. You cannot cross by road. Like you cannot come to file asylum from the US. You can't do that. Before people could do that. But now they there was an agreement between our, our prime minister and the U.S. president, and they decided to close the border. And actually, it is during that meeting where our prime minister said with his mouth, I heard him, I heard him. He said that he's going to increase the number of asylum seekers, he's going to increase the number of asylum seekers who are claiming asylum within Canada. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of people getting the visitor visa. And all. I think it's my opinion. Anyway, let's go back to this story. So this guy now, that was before they crossed the border. He ran away from the cru 
Bruce, and then he, he came, he tried to enter Canada. Guess what happened? They arrested him. Five years in jail, or I think $125,000. $125,000 fine or plus. Actually, it's not or. There's no or. It's $125,000 plus five years in jail because of that. Don't, don't do those mistakes. Information is power. You see the time that you spend watching videos on YouTube, listening to me on my live session, it's not in vain. I'll say something. I'll say something that will help you. Like me, I, I'm used to just kuropoko. I will say something that that one day you remember and you say, oh, Joy said this. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Listen to everybody who talks about immigration. Do your research. Because now like him, can you imagine five years? For what? Like me, I wouldn't have thought it's such a bad crime. Because I've seen a lot of people leave the U.S., come to Canada and file asylum that time. And a lot of people, a lot of people came to Canada during that time. But you see, for him... Is because he had signed a contract that he's going to work under Cruise. So it's actually the Cruise, the company that had hired him, that pursues him through the immigration. It's very serious. Don't do that. Hmm? What about Quebec? Quebec, uh, but you see now, Quebec, they speak French. So if you have to go for hearing, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Joyce, please advise on how to change visit visa to work permit. It's a scam. <laughs> That's a scam. Please, how can one connect to jobs event fair? Okay. There are so many of them. There was one, but I think now it's closed. When I hear of another one, I'm going to advertise it here. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I think I'm done. Huh? I had just missed you and I wanted to say hi. I wanted to see how you're doing. You know, this, this channel is for coming live. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. This channel is for coming live and showing you lifestyle. I'll start showing you lifestyle on this channel. <laughs> Those of you that want to see my vlogs, I have never done that. Sometimes I don't, I, I really don't like showing my life. Um, even though I'm in public, I'm a very private person, even though I'm in public. So I don't know whether I'm going to be very comfortable to show my life. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still negotiating in my heart whether <laughs> I want to do that. You know, people have made YouTube like it's a must. You have to do two types of vlogs: showing the house tour and telling answer Q and A. So you ask me my personal question, and I come and address them here. Me, Joyce, K, Canada, no way, never. That will never happen. But let's see. You know, things are changing every day. <laughs> I think I just want to continue doing immigration. By the way, I'm looking for an editor. Editor for my videos, please. If you know somebody who can do a very good job, the person has to be in Kenya, Nairobi, because I want the work to be done from Nairobi. I have an office in Nairobi. I want to convert it for my, my company. <laughs> JSK Nas Canada is growing. So I want the person to be in Nairobi and to be staying in my office, open and closing. There'll be three of them. To manage me, I want a personal assistant, I want an editor, and I want somebody else. I don't know their names, but I know I want three people. You have to be Nairobi. Send me an email and tell me, give me your history, tell me where you have worked. If you have worked with one of the big bloggers, I'll consider you more, because I want people who have experience. <laughs> Ask them. I said a scam, according to me, because I've never had anybody who has converted visit visa to work permit. It's there in the books. Like, it's there in the website. They have said that you can convert it until 2025. But according to me, I don't have, you know me, I like saying what I, what I know. I've never had anybody who has managed to change it. Somebody who came, uh-uh, it's not easy. Unless maybe for the, the nurses is okay because they are getting the LMI jobs. 
but for you are a great editor are you going to you manage my my you know i have three youtube channels <laughs> My three YouTube channels, my Facebook is dead. Like it has 15,000 people. I'm not able to do videos. I want to, to revive it. My what? Instagram. People are so used to Instagram, but me, I can stay a whole one year. I've not posted anything on Instagram. I want to open a TikTok. <laughs> but TikTok has a lot of drama. I don't know whether I'll manage the drama on TikTok. Ah, it's too much. I actually don't even go to see what other people are doing. It's just the small clips I see on, on circulating, but, but I think I want to be there also. <laughs> so I want somebody to manage all this for me. And I also want a personal assistant. That is different from editor. Personal assistant is for my things in Nairobi. That's why I said it has to be somebody in Nairobi. I have so much I'm doing in Nairobi and I want somebody to be there for me. And I want somebody else, so I want three. So if you know you can be part of that team, send me an email and tell me who you are. Strictly, it has to be Nairobi. Okay? The office is going to be Nairobi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Canada is a very good country, but they have got a lot of immigration pathways, but sometimes, sometimes I don't even understand them. Actually, I don't understand them. Like now they are giving a lot of visit visas. <laughs> and I'm like, guy, you're giving visit visas and, and there are so many people in the pool who have applied for PR through Express Entry and PNP, and you're not even inviting them. And these are professionals. So according to me, let me tell you what I think. According to me, I think what they want more is people for hands-on, like watu mkono. They want those people more. They want more people who are going to work in the, casual laborers who are going to work in the warehouses, people who are going to work in the hotels, cleaners, those are the, in the farms. That's why they're giving those things. And because of 2026, World Cup. Remember, there's World Cup in 2026. It's going to be in Canada. So, how is the winter there? What about a PA in Canada? Ah, yeah, no. No Canada. Canada, how can I even manage to pay you? Seriously? You know, in Canada, they, they ask me to pay you a minimum of $15 per hour. I, I can't afford that. Just to manage my videos... I want somebody I can pay per month, salary per month. How is winter there? Winter is cool. We are starting. We are not yet there. We are, sometimes it falls, other times it doesn't. Like today we are 11 degrees. I'm going to have to do a walk and take a video around. Uh, Pauline, you want to be my peer? <laughs> you have to give me your qualifications and tell me what you have done before. There is somebody else, PA, that I really admire. And I would like to steal her from her. <laughs> I wish there is a way I can find her contacts. I'll just, I'll just pay her twice to double what she's getting. <laughs> and take away from her. Is that being evil? No. It's just promoting her to another level. But I wouldn't like somebody to take mine. So I wouldn't take hers. Anyway, I just admire how she, she manages the her job. She's so good. So good. Okay. <laughs> Can I be your accountant? My, you want to be my accountant? <laughs> Nelias. No, I don't need an accountant. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Guys. Um, I wish you all the best. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kennedy. Unajua Nicole live. 
Na nimekuweka kwa loudspeaker. Unataka kusalimia watu? <laughs> eh? Yeah? Eh? Yeah? Si uambie vile unaendelea Manitoba. They want to hear about Manitoba. Eh? Yeah? <laughs> Guys, do you remember the guy I I did a video with him in uh, on this channel? Just go and watch that video. The, that video, what is the heading of that video? The guy we prayed for, and he was waiting for the study visa to come out. Kennedy. You remember Kennedy? Those of you that have been following me since last year, he's the one calling me. He's in Manitoba. Eh? He's in Manitoba. So I, I would have wanted him to tell you his story, how he's doing, because we, we, we interviewed him here on this channel. But I'll call him after this. <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, John. <laughs> Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> so who knows my beauty? <laughs> I'm eh, from Nigeria. Okay. If one does not meet up with BC, can you advise another? There is no other way. There is no other way other than BC. BC is the way for the nurses, please. Let's stick to that. BC is the way. BC, we are not giving up. Me, I know it's coming. There's a lot of nurses who are arriving, so don't give up. And guys, with that, I want to wish you all the best. Have a good night and God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. <laughs> okay.